There's something about walking down steps you can see through that's very disorienting. But that's not why I'm here. I'm here to look at that pump. And the problem is in this monitoring panel on this catwalk. Now I'll be honest, this is not the first time I've opened this. A little while back, they had an issue where every time the pump would run, and only when it would run, the temperature sensor would short out, blow that fuse, fry that timer relay, and stop the pump from running. So I jumped it out. Temporarily, that is not the permanent solution, despite what you may think. I don't believe you. But disconnecting the sensor did solve the problem. Now I know the sensor is not shorting out to its own power source because I can give it 120 volts and it's fine. It's only when the pump actually runs and there's 480 on those windings that we have issues. And it happens pretty much instantly as soon as the pump's turned on. Also, whoever ran those wires, what the hell? Based on what I could find, this temperature sensor is just a set of bimetallic contacts inside the motor. So there should be no electrical connection between the sensor and the motor winding. Now I couldn't read any connection using my regular multimeter, but I suspect there is one because every time those windings become energized, the sensor shorts out. So I broke out the old mega ohm meter since the multimeter wasn't cutting it. And I figured I'd mega the motor itself while I was at it. The motor measured fine to ground at a thousand volts, but let's hook it from winding to sensor now and see what we got. I'm starting off low with the voltage, which is kind of weird for me because I'm usually doing it at 500 or 1000, but even at 50 volts, it is showing low resistance. And that's why I went with the Megger, because a regular multimeter only tests resistance at a few volts. But that Megger, it'll find more paths to push those electrons through. Now, I'm pretty confident that the problem is not between that junction box and the motor, because it's literally two separate SO cords. But I'm still going to open up the old pecker head and make sure I've traced the problem as far as possible. I don't want to have this entire thing sent out to a motor shop to find out it's a bad cord. I still don't see how it could have been, but I'm going to double triple check. Now that we've got the motor opened up, you can see our power leads coming in on those brass terminals, and there is our temperature sensor in the back. It's literally the only set of control wires in this motor, so there's not a whole lot of places for it to go wrong, but I guess it did. So for my final test, I'm going to go ahead and cut those wire nuts off and test it one more time at the motor itself. I'm getting that same bad reading. I tested it at 100 volts this time, which is fine because it's a 120 volt sensor. I also rechecked the disconnected cord going up top. It was fine. So the issue definitely seems to be inside the motor itself. And unfortunately, this is where I will end my search. We have motor guys for a reason. They definitely know more than I do, although I wish I could dive further into it. But for now, I'll close it up and hand it off to the real professionals. See you on the next one.